Yesterday, Matt Parker published an interesting video titled Can you find five five-letter words with 25 unique letters? And here are the words that he found. Fjord, Gux, Nymph, Vibex, Waltz. And Q was the only letter that he didn't use. And the program that he wrote took about 30 days to complete, so about a month. And one of his viewers took that down to 15 minutes with graph theory. And I was curious if I could take it down a bit more. And I ended up with a solution that takes 30 seconds on my 10-year-old computer, so maybe even faster on yours. Okay, how could I get it that fast? So I simply looked at the constraints. So all the words have five unique characters, meaning there are no duplicates involved. And we ignore the anagrams during search. So the order of letters is completely irrelevant. All the anagrams can be treated as the same word, basically. And when a programmer reads no duplicates and irrelevant order, they immediately think, Ha, huh, that's a set. So I can represent a word as a set of characters. So we could <laughs> literally take a Java util set of Java lang character, but that wouldn't be very efficient um, memory wise. So I chose a diff different representation, a single 32 bit number. So just a Java int. <laughs> How can I represent one word in an int? I simply reserve 26 bits for the letters A to Z and then six bits are unused, but you can put umlaut in there or something. <laughs> and um, the letters that I use, I simply set the bit to one. And here's the first example. So here are 26 bits. I labeled them from A to Z, but in reality, they are the bits from 25 to zero and the six bit to the left of that we don't use. And then, for example, the word fjord, you can see that all the letters in fjord are marked with a one. So the F, the J, the O, the R, and the D are marked with one. And again, the order doesn't matter. So if fjord happened to be another word with, with a mixed order, then the representation as an int would look exactly the same. Okay, so that's how you represent words as a 32-bit number. Um, why is that a good idea? Or what do we want to do with those numbers? First of all, um, here you can see the internal representation, ones and zeros, which I didn't even show you. So the spaces are zeros. But it's I think it's more understandable if, for us humans if I represent zeros as dashes and ones as the characters that they represent. Then the following examples will be more understandable. Okay, so now we have two words, fjord and gax. And if we're interested in whether or not these words share letters, we can simply perform a bitwise AND, that's a set intersection. We simply ask which of these letters appear in both words and uh, the answer is none. <laughs> so they are, they are completely, um, completely separate characters. Okay, and the bitwise AND operation is just a single machine instruction on your CPU, so that's very efficient. Okay, and since they sh don't share characters, we can uh, compute the set union basically with the bitwise OR that would then look like this. So here in this 32-bit number now, 10 bits are set, representing both or the characters in both words, fjord and gux. And we could keep going and represent 15, 20, and 25 bits this way. Okay, so maybe let's look at the um, code now. What do I do exactly? So here I have a static variable for all the raw words that are in the dictionaries. Uh, this code reads the words in from the two files that were linked indirectly by Matt. And uh, then I simply print to the terminals how many words I found. That is about 13,000 words. Okay, um, and now I want to map those words into the 32-bit representation. So I simply stream over the words and then I map to a single integer with a function that I'll show at the very end. So the purpose of this function is to take a word such as apple and turn it into this 32-bit representation. Okay, next we want to remove the words with duplicate characters. So we simply count the number of one bits in the word. For example, for apple, that would be four, whereas for silex, that would be five. So five means five distinct characters, so no duplicates. Whereas here we only have four distinct characters, so one of those characters appears twice in the word. We can't see which one in this, this representation here, but it doesn't really matter. <laughs> um, we have duplicates, that, that's all we care about. So we only uh, keep the ones with five bits set. Okay, and then we sort and call distinct, that will remove the anagrams. So the sorted will put the anagrams right next to each other. 
like here. So Silex and Xylic have the exact same representation because they have the same characters. Order doesn't matter again. And then Distinct can simply then look at the neighbors and remove um, these duplicates. So only one of those will survive. It doesn't really matter which one. It's the exact same number, right? And this number will then represent both of these words in the following algorithm. Okay, and then we turn that into an array. And how many of those words do we have? About 5,000. Okay, cool. So what happens next? Then we loop over all the 5,000 pruned words. So A uh, in each iteration is one of those words. And then we loop over all the words to the right of the A word. And, and then we check if A and B intersect. So if the intersection is not just zero, so all 32 bits set to zero, then at least one character appears in both words. And then we continue at the next B word. Otherwise, um, we compute the um, set union. And then we have 10 bits for the 10 characters in both words. And similar logic for the uh, third word, the fourth word, and the fifth word. OK. And then when we reach um, this code, we know we have five um, perfect words. We have found a solution. So we print the elapsed time and then decode the five words. And then that's why you see the elapsed time here and the decoded words. OK, so how exactly do we decode one word? For example, here the gland, how does that work? So I have, I've written a function for this, not a lot of code. <laughs> um, again, the purpose is to turn this 32-bit integer in, into all the words that are represented by this 32-bit integer. We simply stream over the 13,000 raw words again and only keep those that when we encode them again are equal to the word that we want to decode. So that's some kind of reverse decoding, right? We don't really know how to decode it, so we simply encode all the words again and check, check for equality. Not the most efficient solution, but since we only have 10 uh, solutions that we have to decode, 50 words that we have to decode, uh, it's perfectly fine. Okay, right, and then here we join with the slash, that's why you see the, the anagrams here separated by a slash, and the visualization here, that's um, this guy here. Okay, so that's for one of those words. Now how do we decode all five of them? That was the function that we called here with all five of them. That's the next function, and that's simply builds upon the previous function. So we basically call decode word on uh, on all the five words that we pass in A, B, C, D, and E, and then we join the results with a backslash, right? So the, the interesting part is decode word. Decode words is just do it five times for all the words. Okay, and then there are two functions left. I won't go deep into the implementation, but at least the purpose I can explain. So encode word takes a string such as fjord and then returns a 32-bit number with all the appropriate bits set, which I explained at the very beginning of this video. And then visualize word takes the 32-bit uh, representation and turns it into a readable string where the zeros are dashes and the uh, ones are characters. Yeah, if you want to look at the code, you can pause the video, of course. Okay, so um, yeah, it all came down to choosing a efficient representation. So that's, uh, <laughs> I was quite satisfied with that, especially since the uh, AND for the intersection and the OR for the union are extremely efficient on any CPU of the last three decades. Um, and this measurement again is for my computer, which is already 10 years old. So if your computer is younger than 10 years and if it has yeah, then probably has a better clock speed and or more cores. So if your computer can solve this in less than 30 seconds, let me know. I would really like to know how fast we can go these days. <laughs>